White House and senior foreign affairs correspondent Margaret Brennan is at the White House. So, Margaret, Mick Mulvaney accused Democrats of wanting a government shutdown. How did he explain President Trump's tweet saying, quote, our country needs a good shutdown? Well, that OMB director Mick Mulvaney did uh, an interesting performance from the podium of the White House trying to uh, both uh, explain away the president's seeming call for a government shutdown in a tweet this morning while also condemning Democrats for nearly causing one. Um, what this really was uh, at the end of his presentation and the Homeland Security chief also uh, complaining there that Democrats are, as they say, spiking the football when they point out that this bipartisan deal to keep the government funded leaves out some of the top priorities that President Trump has uh, spoken about, including explicit funding for the bricks and mortar to build a border wall and uh, other items that he had laid down some uh, harsh uh, or laid down some hard lines on I should say in terms of cutting funding to Planned Parenthood etc cetera, etc cetera, uh, aren't in this bipartisan deal and so uh, the OMB director today was explaining that he really sees and the president really sees uh, what this bipartisan deal um, doing as, as a win for the American people that's the spin they're putting on it because because they did indeed get a lot of the defense spending, 21 billion, he said that they asked for. They also did get one and a half billion for increased border security. So uh, their frustration is really about the PR around this and uh, Democrats saying that somehow they, they one-upped the president in getting this bill through. So that seems to be where the president's frustration came from uh, today. That's how it was explained to us. And uh, Mick Mulvaney was left trying to say, we don't want a government shutdown. We're not planning on a government shutdown, but maybe a good shutdown would make Washington sort of uh, clean itself up and clean up its act. But clearly uh, he was trying to um, put a little bit of spin on that to, to make the president's uh, call for a shutdown in September or not seem like an actual threat. Well, Margaret, the other looming possible showdown is over health care. Has the White House indicated what officials there will do if House Republicans can't get their latest version passed? Well, what the White House has said is that it ultimately is up to House Speaker Paul Ryan to figure out when he's got enough votes, go through that whip count to be confident enough that a vote won't fail. Uh, he hasn't said that he's in that place right now. And in fact, we heard uh, from Mark Meadows of the House Freedom Caucus saying we do expect or we would like to see a vote before our break uh, in a few weeks before they leave town, but we still don't have any kind of date on the calendar. The White House is lobbying uh, behind the scenes. We know that Vice President Pence was on the Hill yesterday and again today, really trying to build some momentum, but it's not clear at all yet whether any momentum is there to get this done anytime soon. Finally, Margaret, I want to ask you about President Trump's call with Vladimir Putin. It was their first since the U.S. airstrikes in Syria. Is the U.S. going to be working with the Russians on a resolution to the crisis? Well, it was interesting to see a total and complete change in tone. The last time we heard President Trump talk about Russia's Vladimir Putin uh, was in the wake of those serious strikes where he said relations were at an all-time low, uh, perhaps suggesting even Cold War era or worse. And yet today, this call was described as constructive uh, and detailed by the Secretary of State and by the White House. So uh, what I am told and what I've learned from some of my sources uh, in this country and uh, overseas is that a lot of the details that were laid out in this phone call in, were in regard to Russia's view of how it can lead a diplomatic process to try to end the conflict in Syria. Uh, and they have been leading so far a failed process that involves Iran and Turkey. Uh, it's key, though, clearly, to have Iran and Russia involved since they are the chief patrons of the Assad regime. The White House did not say whether there was any kind of breakthrough there. Remember, uh, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, when he was in Moscow just a few weeks ago, uh, made clear that uh, the Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad can't remain at the helm of a new government in the future, given the war crimes that he has carried out, even with that latest chemical attack. Uh, so 
the big issues don't seem settled here whatsoever. Uh, the fact that there was a phone call at all, you could call progress. The fact that the Kremlin is saying there will be a face-to-face -face meeting in July in Germany uh, could also be read as a sign of progress, but the White House hasn't confirmed that meeting. It could be expected on the sidelines of the G20. And the White House is really trying to um, be, take take a careful tone in describing these initial calls. Uh, it sounds like homework has been given, though, to the Secretary of State, who will be meeting next week with Russia's top diplomat uh, on the sidelines of a different summit in Alaska. All right. Margaret Brennan at the White House for us. Margaret, thank you.